Greetings, mighty companions. Anna Kajawa here, and we are doing a Course in Miracles, as we always do on Mondays. But on Mondays, we do something different, and we do Miracle Roulette, where we let the Spirit, through the random number generator, decide for us where in A Course in Miracles we're going to study from today. So this is Miracle Roulette and Miracle Mondays. And as I always do on Mondays, we're going to begin with an opening meditation where we connect with our higher selves and ask our higher selves to decide for us what in A Course in Miracles and where in A Course in Miracles that we study from. So, as we always do on Mondays, let us do our opening meditation, our request to Spirit to decide for us, where we ask for Spirit's guidance. And so we're gonna do that for about five to 10 minutes, maybe five to seven minutes. And then we will see what Spirit decides for us, what we're going to study from today. So. Go ahead, if you haven't already, close your eyes and take a breath. Welcome everybody. We're doing our opening meditation. So just breathe and close your eyes. And this is the time to remind our minds that it is safe to relax. It's safe to rest. The Course tells us that all things are answered in quiet. And so this is our time to quiet our minds. Allowing our minds to come back home to the peace and the rest and the quiet of this moment now. Tell your mind that it's safe to come back home to the now. All that's here right now is love and peace and power and answers and healing. That's all that's happening right now. so good to allow our minds to come back home to the perfect, precious, powerful, present moment. It feels so good. present moment practice and the present moment prayer that A Course in Miracles gives us is this holy instant do I give to you spirit be you in charge for I would follow you spirit certain that your direction does and will bring me peace. I give you this perfect, precious moment, Spirit. Be you in charge. Only here in the present moment, 
can we communicate with our spirit, with our higher self, and only in the quiet of this present moment can we hear spirit's answer. So in the deep quiet of our mind, in the holy quiets of our heart, we come to you, Spirit, self we share. We ask for your guidance. We ask for your vision. We align our will to your will. And we say, thy will be done now as it is in heaven. So may it be on earth right now. We ask for your guidance, we ask for your vision, and we ask for your comfort and your healing grace. We ask for your answers. We trust your love for us. We trust your infinite and loving wisdom we trust your will for our healing right here, right now. Thy will be done. And self that we share, we ask you to decide for us where in A Course in Miracles that we would read from today. We ask you to decide for us through the random number generator what we read. Trusting your infinitely loving wisdom for us. Wherever we are, whenever we are listening to this, Your loving will is infinite. Your loving will is beyond space and time, without limit, beyond limit. And that's why we want you to decide for us what we read and where we read in A Course in Miracles. And we say thank you in advance We know your consistency, and it is miraculous. It is beyond our understanding. You know the prayer of our hearts, and you know exactly how to answer it. And so, once again, we say, decide for us and where we read and be you in charge. And just rest a moment more in the certainty of your holy relationship with your internal teacher, the divine spark within you, as well as the divine field that we are surrounded in. Notice how it feels to be connected. Notice how good it feels to be one. And breathe it in. When we 
are healed, we are not healed alone. Beautiful. All right, guys. Uh, that was our opening meditation that we always do uh, on our Monday classes where we're tuning in to the divine field and our internal teacher within asking for our internal teacher's guidance and asking it to direct us where we read from in A Course in Miracles. So I'm so happy to see you all. Hi, Carol. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Peter. Lovely to have you in this healing circle. Whenever we come together to listen to the ideas from A Course in Miracles, we do create a real deal, real live healing circle that not only allows the healing power and the, the genius truths to come from the divine field through us and into the world. That's what really happens whenever we join our minds to allow the divine field to come into us and through us. So we are, on Mondays, we do, brand, we do Miracle Roulette, where you never know where the spinning ball is going to stop on. We do Miracle Roulette, where we allow spirit to decide for us through the random number generator, or as we like to call it, the not so random number generator, to decide for us where in A Course in Miracles that we read, and what is it that we read. On, in, on the other classes that I and Greg do, um, we have a specific place that we're reading from, maybe a specific topic that we're studying A Course in Miracles for, but on Mondays, it is the Holy Spirit wild card night, where we have no idea what spirit is going to pull up for us, what kind of answers that spirit is gonna be bringing down for us. All right, so it's kind of exciting, a little bit scary, because you never know where it's gonna go. So on Mondays, I don't have a chance to prep a section because I don't know where it's gonna go. So it's always a little edgy. Totally it's, but it's always uh, miraculous, okay? It has not failed us yet, and it's downright spooky. I mean, downright spooky most of the time, and the odds of some of the things that come up when they do are absolutely beyond chance. Uh, so, all right, so I've got the random number generator up on my tablet, and I've put in the three books of the course, the text, the workbook, and the teacher's manual, and we're just gonna see which book of A Course in Miracles that it chooses. All right, so here we go. There we go. Da -da -da. Text. Okay, so now I'm gonna put in 31 because I know there are 31 chapters. And Greg, you will you look at the table of contents also? Okay, beautiful. Okay, so here we go. It is chapter 18. Oh, of course. That's where we happen to be studying. Ha ha ha. What are the chances of that? And it has and chapter 18 has eight sections. All right, so um, this is a wonderful way to do, to, to use A Course in Miracles like a, like a divining device. You know how people use tarot uh, or they use runes. Um, this particular technique right here, using the random number generator to decide which book of the course and which section in that book is a great way to allow your higher self to communicate very directly and very specifically to you from A Course in Miracles. The Course in Miracles has all the answers. And, um, and so it's a very a powerful and profound way to allow spirit to communicate directly to you in answering, to, in answering your calls for love, your questions, your issues, meaning giving you some miraculous answers that if you will use them and if you will try them, then you can have any kind of miracle, any kind of, any kind of miracle that you need like that, that's that powerful. And anyone who has used it in this way knows that I'm speaking the truth. All right, so 
I put in the random number generator eight sections for chapter 18 and it says four. So now I'm going to go to the table of contents, the little willingness. So we, now we are in the annotated edition. Okay, the annotated edition is the latest edition. And um, so, but the, the section, the little willingness has the same name in the blue covered edition or the black covered edition. Um, so if you, uh, if you don't have the annotated edition, go to, uh, look, go to the table of contents in your blue covered edition or your black covered edition and look around chapter 18 and look for the name of the section, the little willingness. And then there you will find the section. All right, I'm gonna put this in now. The little, the little willingness. Sorry, this takes time. Sorry about the dead air here. The little willingness. All right, here we go. I love this section. This is a very beautiful, be very beautiful section. All right, let's see. Same in the blue book. Okay, so it's 18.8 in the blue book. 18.4. 18.4 in the blue book. Hmm, and now I can't find it. And the same in the answer, 18.4. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Oops, here we go. <laughs> oh, come on now. No. All right, here we go. Sorry guys, sorry it's taking me a little while to find the little willingness and you guys can be finding it while I'm finding it. Hi Ashley, love to see you. Hi Maya, hi Carolina. Lovely to see you all. And um, do to do, do. This is the one downside of doing the random number generator. It takes forever for me for on this device to find the section. So here we go. So we're doing the chapter 18, the little willingness, and okay, I'm almost there. All right. Okay. Ah, sorry guys. All right. Man, okay, here we go, finally. All right, the little willingness. Beautiful. Hi, Brew, lovely to see you as well. Okay, The Little Willingness, Chapter 18, Section 4. And um, if you're watching and um, if you would be willing to write the name of the section for the other people who tune in later, um, if you'll write in there, Chapter 18, Section 4, The Little Willingness, I would appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'll help other people who tune in later to know where we're at. All right, here we go. The Little Willingness. It says, the holy instant is the result of your determination to be holy. The holy instant is the answer. So when you have a moment, when you are determined to be happy, to be whole, to be peaceful, when you have a moment when you're determined to be holy, which means to be whole, which means to be healed, that is the answer. I'm determined to have peace. I'm determined to see this another way. I'm determined to be happy. That moment is the answer. Ah, so it's not when, oh, I see how that works and I figure out what to do. No, the moment that you are determined to be happy, to be healed, to be at peace. That is the moment you receive the answer, the determination to have correct perception, to be peaceful is the answer. The desire to have that answer and the willingness to let that answer come precede the answers coming. Wow. So where is it right now in your life where you need some peace, where you need an answer? Wherever you don't have peace right now, 
that's where you need an answer, where you haven't heard the answer to your misperception. So we're asking for the answer. In this situation where I don't have peace, uh, I am asking I, for the answer. And the way that this is telling us that you can allow that answer to come is the determination to be holy, which means happy, which means at peace. The desire for the peace the willingness to let the peace come, the desire for the peaceful answer, the, de the willingness to let the peaceful answer come, precede the coming of the peaceful answer. The Course in Miracles says that uh, God's answer is some form of peace. When your problems have met with peace, that's when your problems are solved. Now, then it says, you prepare your mind for receiving the answer only to the extent of recognizing that you want the answer, you want the peace above all else. Wow, okay, I need some peace. I'm asking for the answer that will bring me peace or healing or joy or love, whatever it is that you need right now. What is it that you need right now? Okay. Um, the problem is some lack of peace. The problem is the I don't have peace in this area or this form. I am asking for peace in some form. Now this is saying that you prepare for it, you invite it. All right guys, settle down. Okay. The ego is definitely going off right now. It's like, let's fight right here, right now. She's, she's asking for peace, let's fight, said the dogs right at my feet. Who could that be? All right. So it's saying that you, you need an answer, you need some peace. Well, the first thing you do is you desire the peace. And then you have a little willingness to let the peace come, okay? That's the first part of allowing it to come. Then you prepare your mind for the receiving of the peace the answer by recognizing that you want it above all else. Above all else, I want to see. Above all else, I want, I want peace. Above all else, I want peace. Okay? That's how you prepare your mind for it. Isn't that great? That to have the peaceful answer, the answer that brings you peace in whatever form you need it, it doesn't come from you uh, <laughs> attacking yourself. It doesn't come from figuring anything out. It doesn't come from you understanding what's going on. It doesn't come from you getting somebody else to change. It doesn't come from you making yourself change in some way. That peaceful solution that you need and that you deserve comes from your desire for it and your willingness to let it come and you recognizing that you want that peace above all else, okay? So I want this answer, I need this peace. So I have to remember that I want the peace above all else. Above all else like what? Above being right, above getting my way, above getting my script filled, above getting my way, above being right, above getting everybody to change the way I think they should change for me to be happy. I just want peace. Above all else, I just want peace, okay? I want peace 
more than I want to be right. I want to be happy more than I want to be right. So that is how to allow the peaceful answer or the abundant answer or the loving answer or the healing answer to come to you that resolves and heals and undoes the problem. All right, Course in Miracles is nothing, nothing but one answer, one answer, one answer, one solution, one formula after another for how to have peace, how to have a miracle in any situation that you're experiencing right now, no matter how difficult, no matter how bad it seems to be. The Course in Miracles says there is no order of difficulty in miracles, which means there's no order of difficulty in answers that bring peace in any situation, in any relationship. That's what A Course in Miracles, that's the first, one of the first things that A Course in Miracles tells us. There's no order of difficulty in miracles. There's no order of difficulty in receiving peaceful answers to any problem that you've got going on or that are going on anywhere. Now, this is telling us how to receive one, how to have an open mind, how to set the conditions, how to set the conditions where a miracle of healing and a miracle of peace can come to you without you understanding anything, without you doing anything, without you trying to fix anything, without anybody around you changing. This is the way to receive a miraculous answer or solution that brings peace and resolution or abundance or whatever you need, whatever form of peace you need. Some days you need peace in the form of a miracle around finances. Some days you need peace in the form of your relationship. Some days you need peace in the form of something relative to your body. So um, some form of peace where you didn't have peace and now, thank you, wow, now I have peace, okay? And that's a miracle. Now, so you, how do you, how do you prepare yourself for it? You desire it. I desire peace above being right. I'm willing to let peace come to me, even though I have no idea how or why that could happen. Not even sure I deserve it. And also, you prepare your mind by recognizing that you want that peace above all else, above being right, above getting your way. That's how you prepare your mind to receive spirit's answers that will bring you peace in whatever form you need it. Beautiful, okay. Hi Grace, hi Patrick, hi Bridget. Lovely to see you all. Again, we are in chapter eight, section four, the little willingness. Oh, 18, what did I say? Eight? Yeah, chapter 18, section four, the little willingness. The mind that anything that loves you is something that wants you to have peace, okay? And God is that infinitely loving field of consciousness that is our source that only wants us to be happy. Of course, in miracles, is saying something very radically different about God, our source. And it says that the only thing that our Father, Mother, God, Divine Field Source wants for us is peace, just to be happy. And we're not used to thinking about God like that. We didn't learn that about God. And so what A Course in Miracles says about God is very radical. Um, and But that's what A Course in Miracles is saying that all that our Creator wants for us is that we be happy, that we have peace, that peace and happiness are, are one and the same. And so anything that loves you for real 
is going to make it such that all that they require to give you peace and happiness is just a little willingness. That's the way our source is. Our source is like, uh, I can't force it on you because I gave you free will. You have free will, which means unless you ask for the answer, our creator and our spirits are not going to push it on us. That's why what's required to receive love's answers is a little willingness, a little desire. Because spirit knows that if spirit gives you the answer before you desired it, that that would feel like an attack. That would be not honoring our free will. And spirit and source, if nothing else, honors our free will. And so in honor of our free will, higher self and our source has to wait until we desire it, until we have a little willingness and desire to receive it. So that's what a loving spirit parent uh, does with us. Okay? A loving and wise spirit parent waits till we say, I want it, I want it. I want your answer, I want your peace, I want your love. Because our spirit and our, our higher self and our source knows that until we desire it, we're, we're not gonna receive it, we're not gonna recognize it. So that's why, that's why we've heard um, through many of our spiritual traditions or our religious traditions, uh, knock and the door is opened, ask and you shall receive. That's not a condition that source puts on us, like, unless you ask, I'm not gonna give it to you. It's just the, it's the thing that honors our free will. So as soon as you ask for it and want it, it is there, as much as you can accept it. All right, beautiful. So it says, um, and it's not necessary that you do more to receive those miraculous solutions and those miraculous answers that bring you peace and healing. You don't have to do anything more than desiring it and recognizing that you want that peaceful answer above all else, even being right. It is not necessary that you do more to receive the miracle solution, the miracle answer that will bring you peace, that will bring you abundance or healing, whatever form of peace that you need right now. So what form of peace do you need right now? I want you to ask yourself that. What form of peace do you need right now? Okay. Is it a physical healing form of peace? It is just a peace of mind form of peace? Is it a relationship form of peace? Is it a, 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 a financial abundance form of peace that you need right now? What, where is it right now that you would like that peaceful solution? Where is that in your life? I want you to bring that to your awareness so that we are, so that you can be applying these ideas during right now as we teach. This is a curriculum whose purpose is practical application. Okay? Uh, that's what this curriculum is for. Applying these ideas so that we can experience the peace that is uh, of, made available to us when we apply the truth. When you apply these ideas and use them as it teaches us how to do so, in essence, you're saying to God and Spirit, I want it. I want peace. I want your answers. I want your peace. I want your answers for peace in this situation. That's what Spirit and God know. They're like, oh, she's using those ideas. Uh, that lets me know that she wants the my answers that will bring her peace instead of her plans 
and her judgments and her interpretations, which obviously haven't brought her peace. They brought her a bunch of trouble. So that's the beautiful thing about, about uh, experiencing the peace and the love and the joy that really that's all that love and source and the divine field wants for you because that's what you are. Peace is what you are, peace is who you are, peace is what you have. And so the universe and source just wants peace for you. Peace is the nature of reality. I know that's a big shocker, but the nature of reality is not conflict. The nature of reality is not pain. The nature of reality is not loss and death. The nature of reality is not that everything goes into decline and dies. That's not the true nature of reality or the universe, you know? So the universe wants you to have that which is real and true for everyone. Right? The Course in Miracles says what we have done to our minds has made our minds seem so unnatural what we've done to our minds. Now, what we've done to our minds is that fear seems natural and death seems natural. Death and taxes and fear seem natural. When death and taxes and fear is not natural at all. But what we've done to our minds has made what's not real and not natural seem natural. That's why we need a new way of seeing. All right. Okay, so it's not necessary that we do more to receive love and truth's answers that uh, bring us peace. But it is necessary that we realize that we cannot do more. Okay? You cannot do more to receive the peaceful answers, the miracles of peace. You can't do more to receive it. If you try to do more, to receive the miracles of peace and the answers that bring peace, then you're just going to mess it all up. Okay? It's not necessary to do more than uh, be willing and desire it. And uh, if you try to do more, then you're just going to block those peaceful solutions and answers. All right. Beautiful. Irene says, where is it you would like a peaceful resolution applying these ideas practical the universe wants you to have what's real and true for everyone yes and trisha says by applying the ideas will heal your peace beautiful exactly all right then it goes on to say and don't try to give your higher self what your higher self isn't asking for your higher self isn't asking for your interpretation or your judgment or your analysis or your plan for the peace. Higher, your higher self is like, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I'm not asking for that to give you the peaceful solution, right? So don't try to give Holy Spirit what Holy Spirit's not asking for. And Holy Spirit's not asking for your plan or your interpretation or your judgment. So. Don't give that to Holy Spirit. Just focus your attention on, I'm willing, I desire it, and I desire love's peaceful answer above all else. That's all I want right here, okay? I've, I've already had the result of my plans and my scripts and my interpretations, and it didn't bring me peace. I still have the problem, okay? So um, all you need to do is willingness, desire, and desiring it above, above all else. Like what we read last week, we need not tell God what to Exactly, do. exactly. We read, where was it we read that? In chapter um, 17, maybe what? Mm. Mm -hmm. It says, it says, you need not tell God what to do. It says, you don't need to tell God what to do, okay? Um, we're the ones, God is the one with the answer. We're the one who came up with the problem. So, um, to have the, it's so interesting to have the miraculous, peaceful solution. All that's required is that you desire it 
that you be willing to receive it, that you be willing to let it come to you. But that's the hang up. The Course in Miracles says that our problem with the peaceful solution is that um, the way to experience it is to let it come to us. But our ego finds that personally insulting that my understanding of the problem, and my analysis of the problem, and my plan is such a, a minor uh, 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 contribution. contribution. Thank you. Blah. Thank you, Greg. So wonderful to have a partner who's a Course in Miracles addict, you know. <laughs> so wonderful when I have those senior moments. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that the, our difficulty in receiving the brilliant, absolutely brilliant genius solutions that will bring us peace in any situation in which we are not experiencing peace is that uh, we want to we want to believe that our interpretation means something or that we have uh, that that um, that our understanding is what makes it possible. That we know what it needs to look like. Yes, that we know what it needs to look like and we know what's going on. Um, we, ha we have this belief that, well, if I don't understand it, then it must not be true and I don't want it. That's why it says that part of the formula for receiving love's brilliant genius solution to what you're going through right now is the determination and the desire for it above all else, okay? Which means above even your interpretations, your scripts, your plans, and even your understanding. It's very difficult for us to accept that I don't have to understand the solution to accept it. That's really, oh no, I gotta understand it. I gotta understand what the problem is. I gotta understand what the solution is. I gotta understand how the solution works to fix the problem. I gotta understand what's going on. And that is not at all. As a matter of fact, the more you try to understand what the problem is and how the problem, how the, how the solution will fix it, the less you will be able to accept spirit's genius brilliant solution okay the only way to accept that solution is to go i do not understand anything but i do want love's answer i do want god's plan for my peace and happiness in this situation and i want it above all else even if i don't understand it at all i don't understand how this happened and how i could get the solution and blah 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 doesn't matter as a matter of fact, the I do not understand anything about what's going on, hence the problem, but I want God's solution, God's answer, and only God's solution and God's answer because only love's answer will work, and I want it above all else, even if it means I'm completely wrong about what I thought was going on, which obviously I am. That's what it takes to receive the brilliant, loving, genius solution that is being offered for you to you right now that you can accept for this. All right, beautiful. Greg says, Greg and Trisha feeling the love from here in Boulder County. Right on, Greg. Thank you. Lovely. Beautiful. All right. And so again, um, I'll tell you we are chapter 18, section four, The Little Willingness. And again, don't forget, where is it right now that you really need love's brilliant genius solution to something you thought was impossible? As you've tried to fix this problem, you ha it, you, it hasn't worked. As you've tried to figure out this problem and what it means and where it's coming from, and you've tried to fix that problem and change that problem, and you've been doing it for years and years and you still don't have peace, where is that in your life right now? Because that's where you want to be applying these ideas today. All right, beautiful. Now, <clears throat> great. So that means if I still have a problem, 
guess, you guess what that means? That means I've been trying to fix it in my own way. I've been trying to analyze it and judge it and fix it and change it in my own way. That's the only way that you can still have that problem is if you've been trying to fix it and understand it in your own way where you were trying to get your way accomplished. You weren't just going for peace and spirits uh, form of peace, all right? Then it says, so don't attempt to give your higher self what your higher self isn't asking for. Because if you give to your higher self what your higher self isn't asking for in this situation, then you're just gonna add the ego onto your higher self and you're gonna confuse the two, the ego and your higher self. Okay, great, great, all instructions here. Again, don't do what, don't try to give to spirit what spirit isn't asking. Spirit isn't asking you to understand what's going on. Spirit isn't asking you to fix it or figure it out or understand anything about what's going on, about the nature of the problem. Your higher self is just saying, uh, please, don't, I didn't ask for that. <laughs> I didn't ask for you to, to get, I didn't ask for your input about what it means and what the problem is and how to fix it, okay? Uh, if you knew what the problem really meant and how to fix it, you wouldn't have the problem, okay? So sit back and sit down and settle down and stop trying to tell me how to fix the problem that uh, you obviously don't know how to fix or else you wouldn't have that problem anymore. And if you keep trying to tell your higher self how to fix the problem and what the problem is, then you're just confusing the ego and your higher self. All right. I love it. So it's, it's, the, the Course of Miracles to the Ego is just like, oh, 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 oh. That's what uh, it feels like to my ego studying A Course of Miracles. It's just the ultimate of an insult to the ego to hear A Course in Miracles say, listen, your understanding is not a powerful contribution. Your understanding and your planning had nothing to do, has nothing to do with the answer and the solution. As a matter of fact, what you think you understand is a complete deterrent, is a complete block. And that's the problem all along, okay? your answers, your solutions, your fixes, right? So, yes, that's right. That's why that lesson in the, in the text, I need do nothing. This is another way of, of teaching that lesson. You need do nothing. You need do nothing except the willingness to let spirits solution come and the desire for spirit's answer and the determination that you want spirit's answer above all else even though you're certain you know what it all means but if you knew what it all means you wouldn't have the problem don't forget that <laughs> ego's like ah, ah you're killing me that's right all right so this is why sometimes it feels a little difficult to read A Course in Miracles. It's not because A Course in Miracles is complex or complicated or difficult to understand. It's really not. The reason A Course in Miracles is difficult to study is because for the ego, it is the ultimately personally insulting <laughs> ideas. <laughs> the ego is just offended to the max by A Course in Miracles. Exactly. Like, what? You don't need my opinion? What? What kind of cult is this? What do you mean you don't need my opinion? <laughs> you don't need my opinion? Well, who do you think you are? Well, Anna, uh, yeah, what has been the result of your opinion? Are you happy? Mm. Oh, well, now, now that you put it like that... I mean, why you get all have to get all complicated like that, ego, and like ask for the proof? You know, our opinions and our perceptions 
is where our problems came from. So the answer, the solution that brings some form of peace has got to be something that has nothing to do with our opinion or our judgments. As a matter of fact, The Course in Miracles says that the way you'll recognize Spirit's answer to your problem is that it will be nothing that you ever thought. That's how you'll recognize one of Spirit's answers. The answer will come and you'll be like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> right. Oh, that must have been an answer from Spirit. That must have been one of God's plans or God's answer because I did, it wasn't, I didn't think of that, you know. It's something totally different than what I had come up with. That's how you recognize Spirit's answer, okay? The problem is whatever ideas and opinions and judgments you have had about it, that's why you're suffering here. And the answer is gonna be something that you hadn't thought of, that you hadn't come up with yet. And the only problem in receiving it is getting past that part of you, the ego that feels personally insulted that you didn't come up with that first. That's the, that's the hardest part in accepting spirit's answers. Okay. It's so good to know because you are going to, you, you, you are going to experience resistance to this thought system. And so the more you know about why and how your ego, your past programming and conditioning resists and is offended by these ideas, then the faster you can still receive the ideas despite your ego's resistance and offense. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so it says, um, it says it's, your higher self who adds the greatness and the might, not you, <laughs> not your opinions. So it's spirits, it's spirit who adds the greatness and the might to these miraculous solutions that bring peace in some form to whatever you're going through. All right, beautiful. And your higher self spirit joins with you to make that holy instant far greater than you can even understand. What's the holy instant? The holy instant is that moment where you say, I really want peace. I want God's answer. I want spirit's solution that will bring me peace. I desire it. I want it even more than I want my plans and my scripts. Uh, that's the holy instant. That's the holy instant. And that's the moment when that solution, when that miraculous solution that you'd never thought of, but dude, why didn't I think of that, comes. And it's spirit that joins that moment, that holy moment where you want peace more than you want to be right. And spirit joins that moment and makes it far greater than you could even understand. All right. So do you hear what a holy instant is? A holy instant, that's the moment when truly you'd rather be peaceful, uh, you'd rather be happy than right. You'd rather receive Spirit's answer that cannot fail to bring you peace, no matter what the problem, more than you want to be right about your version of the problem. All right, as a matter of fact, it is your realization that you need do so little that enables your higher self to give you so much. Oh, beautiful. Whew, beautiful. Isn't that funny that that's the hardest thing for us? I mean, we could receive, my goodness, we could receive any and every miraculous solution to any problem, anywhere, anytime, we could receive it right here, right now. Except for our unwillingness, except for our belief that the, the solution needs our understanding. <laughs> wow. So the only thing that is blocking the reception 
of the miracle solutions that I really need and I deserve is my arrogance, is my thinking that I need to do something to receive it, that I need to do something to earn it, and that, well, unless I understand it, but it can't be real. Okay? That's the only thing blocking whatever miracle solution you need in any situation right now. Dang. Let's take a breath on that. That was only one paragraph. My God. <laughs> Seems like that was like six paragraphs. All right. So now, again, we're in chapter 18, section four, the little willingness, and now we are on paragraph two. Beautiful. Trisha says you are to do nothing, sit back and listen. Exactly. Okay. So again, what I, in practical application, where is it right now that you, uh, your plans and your solutions did not work to bring you peace or abundance or healing or health? Where is that? Wherever that is in your life, we, you want to tell yourself right now, you want to tell yourself, um, I desire love's answer that will bring me peace. I am willing to receive it. I desire to receive spirit's answer and I want it above all else, meaning I want it more than I want to be right about my version of this problem, my interpretation, my story, okay? So, Wow, so if you can be willing to be wrong about your version of the problem, your interpretation of the problem, then you can have Spirit's answer that will work to bring you peace and you can have it right now. You don't have to wait for it, okay? So that's, that's, how, that's how you, what you want to apply, that's what you want to say to yourself in order to be able to, to clear the resistance blocks to receiving spirits answers to whatever problems you got going on right now. Beautiful. Now, then it says in paragraph two, don't trust your good intentions. So don't trust, well, I am just trying to help spirit out. I mean, obviously spirit needs help. I'm just trying to help them and I'm just trying to help myself. I'm just trying to help spirit do spirit's job. Don't trust your good intentions in this. Your good intentions in this situation obviously are not enough. If your good intentions in this situation problem you're experiencing were enough, I'm just trying to be happy. I'm just trying to be helpful. Yeah, but if the result is there's still peace and lack and sickness and anger and guilt and fighting, then your good intentions are not enough. That is not going to be that which is going to allow you to receive spirits miraculous solution that will bring you all peace. Okay? Don't trust your good intentions. They're really not enough in this situation. But here's what you should do. Trust implicitly your willingness, whatever else may enter. And concentrate only on your willingness. And don't be disturbed that shadows uncertainties surround your willingness. Of course, your ego uncertainty surrounds your willingness. Of course it does. That's why you're here. That's why you came. If you could come here without uncertainty and an ego that uh, is surrounding your willingness, then you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't need A Course in Miracles. You wouldn't need the Holy Instant. You wouldn't need Spirit's Peaceful Solutions. So, uh, again, instruction, 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 instructions about how to receive your higher self, God's solutions, remedies, answers, 
to your problems that can never fail to bring you peace, okay? How to do it, okay? And the last part we just heard is, what was the last part? It says, right, don't trust your good intentions. I'm just trying to be helpful. I'm just trying to be helpful. Uh, don't trust your good intentions. Just trust implicitly your willingness. I'm willing. I'm willing to receive God's answer. I'm really willing to receive God's answer in this situation. I'm willing to receive love's plan in this situation. That's the only thing you should be trusting right now. Not your interpretations, not your good intentions, not your judgments, not your opinions, not your plans. Don't trust any of that. The only thing you should be doing is trusting implicitly your willingness, your desire for God's plan for your peace and your happiness. I trust your plan, God, and I trust it implicitly. And uh, thank God I don't have to understand it. I don't have to do anything for it. I don't have to change myself to receive it. I don't got to change them to receive it. I don't have to change a dang thing. All I have to do is trust my own willingness and my own desire for God's plan for my happiness, for God's answer to this problem. That's all that is required. In other words, don't come to that holy instant in arrogance, assuming that you need to achieve the state of peace that the holy instant brings with it. So, in other words, that's the, the Course is telling us that's what we do. That we go to the Holy Instant, oh God, I need your answer, the higher self, I need your, your answer to this, I'm in pain, I'm suffering, what's your answer? And we come to the Holy Instant when we're asking for peace and love's plans for our happiness. But we are coming to that moment assuming we got to bring ourselves to that peace and give that peace to us before we ask. That's insane. Wait a minute, you're gonna come to me asking for my answer, but you're assuming that you've got to achieve the peace first that my answer is going to give you, says our higher self. Um, that's not very logical and it doesn't work <laughs> to bring you peace. So don't assume that you gotta make yourself peaceful before you come to spirit, to ask spirit to give you an answer that brings you peace. That's arrogance, that's arrogance. The reason that you need spirit's answer is because you don't have peace. So stop trying to figure out, stop trying to come to that holy instant uh, moment in arrogance thinking that you gotta like make yourself worthy and make yourself peaceful before you ask spirit for spirit's answer that will bring you peace. Mr. Lane, most of us have been taught how to pray is to come and tell the plan how we have to do this at my job or do this yes, my Yes, that's right. That's right, that's perfect. Greg's like, that's typically how we do prayer. We're like, okay, God, I need, a, here's what I would like for you to do for me at work, okay, so that I can be happy. I need you to change this person, and if you would just, like, work it out so that my schedule can change and I get some more money, all right. So we go to Spirit and tell Spirit what it would take for us to have peace, and then we ask Spirit, would you please make that happen? And Spirit's like, <laughs> okay, honey, sweet innocent child of God, uh, if your if, if your plan for how to have peace would have been real, you would already have peace. You wouldn't have to come to me and ask for peace. Okay, so um, the fact that you don't have peace and you got a problem means that you don't. It means that your interpretation, you don't know the truth that would bring you peace. You don't know the answer and the plan that would bring you peace. So don't come to God or higher self with a plan for how it should give you peace. 
come to come to the holy instant which is that moment where you come in true humility the opposite of arrogance to your higher self and say uh, I obviously don't know the answer that brings peace in this situation but I want peace and I want peace above all else even above being right and getting my way even aside from the, the even aside from the, the fact that I, I I am not right I mean of course a miracle says that the fact that you don't have peace that you're in hell you're angry and upset and sick and broke and lonely uh, is your clue that you don't know the truth about yourself and you don't know the truth about the situation so the fact that you don't have peace um, is your uh, your proof that you don't know the truth okay? so it says when you come to the holy instant not in arrogance thinking that you know the way to peace and you're gonna tell spirit how to give it to you uh, come to the holy instant in true humility realizing that you don't know the answer that would bring only peace for everyone including you but that you desire it and that you're trusting your willingness to receive an answer that will bring you peace that you didn't think of that's what it means to come to the holy instant in true humility and that's the mental condition that will enable you to receive it and re receive it like that okay as soon as you have met the condition for receiving spirit's answers then spirit doesn't waste any time it happens like that okay spirit's like well very good but i'm very busy and i will get to you and bring you the plan that'll bring you peace shortly just hang in there as soon as you have met the conditions for the miraculous solution, there it is. It is received immediately. Beautiful. All right. Jerry says, spirit is the purifier and come to me with empty hands. Exactly. Spirit is saying, come to me with empty hands. Uh, em coming to spirit with empty hands means coming to spirit without your plans. That's typically our prayers. Please God, make it happen like this and make it happen with this person and please make it happen with this person and make, please make this person change and please make this happen. Thank you, God. And then if it doesn't happen like that, then we're like, God, there is no God. God hates me or whatever it is. I'm not gonna ask God for anything anymore. God didn't, God didn't help me out. Timothy says, I'm asking for the holy instant to heal or finalize a lingering poor marriage. Beautiful, thank you, Timothy, for, for that honest prayer. So, Timothy, so the way that that might go is, Spirit, I trust that you have a plan for mine and my, my spouse's happiness that cannot fail. I trust you have a solution that brings us both peace. And I do not know what that is, but I want your plan for peace for us both above all else. And I'm willing to receive your plan for our peace. And I don't understand it and I don't have to understand it and that's fine. I want your plan for our happiness above all else. I want your plan for our happiness more than I want to be right about why it's not peaceful, why it's not happy. Thy will be done. So thank you, Timothy, for saying that so that we could pray that with you. Beautiful. I love it. Thank you for your honest sharing, Timothy. Because we all have some poor relationships that we really could use some 
peaceful miracles, some miracles of peace in all of us, whether it's your spouse or your family or your co-workers or your children uh, or your politicians or whatever. All right, beautiful. It says, the miracle of the holy instant lies in your willingness to let it be what it is. And what is the holy instant? It's a miracle moment. The holy instant is that moment when now your mind is open for a miracle that you couldn't give yourself. That's what a holy instant is. You let the holy instant, you let that miracle moment be what it is. That's a holy instant. So remember, it said earlier, the holy instant is the answer. It is the answer, okay? I'm coming to this moment now with empty hands, as Jerry said, with just a willingness to receive Spirit's plan that I have no idea what it is, and I desire Spirit's plan for peace, um, which I could not give myself, and I, I'm willing and I desire it above all else, and I'm asking for it. That's a holy instant, and that's the answer, because whoosh, as soon as you come to the holy instant like that, there comes the answer. As soon as your block has been removed, whoosh, there it is. It's been there all along, but you blocked it with you trying to do more than spirit your higher self is asking you to do so that spirit can give you peace. It's like spirit's trying to give us peace and we're like, you know, do it like this, do it like that, do it like this, do it like that. Spirit's like, no, oh, just sit, sit, sit down, just sit down, okay? Just sit down and that will help me, all right? <laughs> so trying to help me to give you peace, okay? If you could help me give you peace, you wouldn't need peace right now. So just sit back and do nothing, please. <laughs> Just say, I need to do nothing. Okay. And that is the most difficult thing that for the ego to do. There is nothing your ego will resist or fight more than, I need to do nothing. Yeah, because in this uh, delusional world, if you don't do something, then you don't accomplish it. Exactly. You don't accomplish that. Mm -hmm. that. Exactly. So you know that phrase, um, uh, stand up and do something? The Course of Miracles is saying, sit down and do please nothing. sit down and do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> please, really. Uh, I can give you all the answers that uh, uh, for peace, the solutions will bring you peace. I can give it all to you and I, I can give it all to you right now in whatever situation, but for, you, for me to be able to give it to you, you have to um, do nothing. Just be willing, desire it above all else. All right, beautiful. Irene says, go to spirit humble and with empty hands. Beautiful. Irene says, trust HS and its plan for my marriage, work, physical issue, mental well-being, happiness, above all else. Yes, beautiful. That's the problem with A Course in Miracles. It's just too easy. Oh, too it's too simple. I just don't deserve it that easy. Oh, uh, and why is that difficult? Because what did we learn? We learned, you know you gotta earn it. You gotta earn it. You gotta make yourself worthy of it. You gotta figure it out and you gotta fight for it. And you know, God helps those who help themselves. <laughs> you know, that's what we learned. And so to just receive, uh, to just be willing and just to desire it, it just, uh, it's, it takes so much trust. Uh, <laughs> that takes too much trust. That's what's difficult about A Course in Miracles, is that it's the now what is the most natural, easy thing has become the most difficult and complicated, complex thing. 
The Course says that simplicity is very difficult for twisted minds and ease is very difficult to accept for minds that have come to believe that they are guilty. If you believe you're guilty, there's no way, no how you deserve to just ask for it and receive it because of who you are. No way. That's what's difficult about A Course in Miracles. It's, these ideas are not difficult. They are the most natural, easy thing that you could ever do in the whole wide world. It's the only easy thing in the whole wide world that you could do. But because of the guilt that we have learned, we don't believe that we just that we deserve it just like that, that easy, just because of who we are. That's what's difficult about it. Now, uh, as you keep learning the course and applying it, even though your ego resists it more than it's resisted anything else in your life, um, there will come a time when that resistance will diminish and you'll experience a breakthrough where you're like, okay, I'm willing. I'm willing for love's answer. And I don't understand how it could happen. And uh, all right, I'm going to do nothing except desire it and be willing um, and to do nothing. And then, <sighs> and then, wow. And then what happens after that um, gives you the ability to then do it again and do it again and it gets easier and easier, less resistance, less resistance, less resistance as you go on, on this path. All right. Now, it says, we're still in paragraph two, now we're in sentence nine, and it says, and in your willingness to let the holy instant be what it is, lies also your acceptance of yourself as you were meant to be. Wow, beautiful sentence, beautiful idea. As you come to the holy instant, that healing moment, the miracle moment, and you just let it be what it is and let it do what it does without having to understand it and without having to tell it what to do for you, then also in that holy instant moment, where you let the holy instant be what it is and give to you what it has for you. That's also the moment that you accept yourself as you were meant to be, okay? So in that holy instant where you go, I want love's plan for my peace and my happiness. I want love's solution to this situation. And I desire love's peace uh, love's plan for my peace above all else even being right in that moment you also go oh and I also uh, let myself be and accept myself as I was meant to be without having to tell myself what I am or what I should be that's a holy instant a moment where you accept yourself as you were meant to be. You accept yourself as you were created instead of, instead of yourself that you think you should be. You know, I think myself is this and I think myself is that and I think I should be this and I think I should be that, okay? Uh, in the holy instant, you accept yourself as you were meant to be as you were created. You, you're not coming to the holy instant telling yourself, you should be more of this, or you should be less of that, or you should be like that, or you should be like them. You just come to the holy instant, allowing yourself to be exactly as you were meant to be, exactly as you were created by God. Which I am, I've been set up to be taken care of by God. Yes, exactly. And coming to the holy instant and accepting yourself as you were meant to be, and what you were meant to be is loved, supported, sustained, taken care of. Why? Because you are God's beloved own child. It's like, that's how I was meant to be. 
Yeah, wait a minute. I was created to be something that is 100% worthy of unconditional love and support, no exceptions, no conditions. You don't have to do nothing. And I don't have to do anything for it? Are you sure about that? Because I sure didn't hear nothing like that from my parents or my teachers or my clergy. So are you sure about that? Well, the holy instant is where you come to that moment being willing to accept yourself as you were meant to be, as you were created to be, which means loved without condition, without exception, no matter what. Dang, that would be a holy instant. <laughs> that, that, that is a miracle moment. Okay. A miracle moment is where you come and you're asking for love's solution that will bring peace to this situation and you want that and you desire that above all else and you're willing to let spirits answer come even if it don't match your uh, interpretations and judgments or plans at all and the miracle moment also is when you come to that moment and you're like okay whatever you say i am then that's what i am okay and what is it you say i am well of course a miracle says that uh what you are is a guiltless child of god and that you are sustained by the love of god just because of who you are and that's a fact and no condition no exception no matter what wow okay that's a holy instant. And, and then the word that this gives for this holy instant, this, this miracle moment, is called humility. That's real humility. Real humility comes to your source and goes, what am I? I, I am what you created me to be. That's what true humility is. I don't come to God and go, God make me this or God you made me this or make me this or you made me like this God <laughs> or God why didn't you make me like this okay humility is where you come to the holy instant uh, not telling God or spirit how to make you happy or what you are Okay. That's true humility. And true humility will never, never ask that you remain content with littleness. But true humility does require that you be not content with less than greatness that doesn't come from you. Wow. And your difficulty with the holy instant where you receive it all without having to do anything comes from your fixed conviction that you aren't worthy. Wow. That's our difficulty with it. Which means the difficulty with the holy instant, which means receiving all that the universe and life and love wants to give us and has created us, just for the asking, just for the desire, just for the willingness. Our difficulty with accepting that comes from our fixed determination, our fixed conviction that we're not worthy of that. Wow, that's the only difficulty with coming to the holy instant and saying, how did you create me? Uh, I am as you created me, it says, that's our own difficulty with it. And it says, right, it says, so when it says that um, humility never says, you should be content with littleness, okay? That's not humility. That's what we learned humility was. Humility means I'm not worthy. I'm just a lowly worm. I'm not even fit to kiss the hem of your garment. Okay. That's not humility at all. That's 
arrogance, according to A Course in Miracles. Humility will never ask that you be content with littleness. True humility asks that you not be content with less than the greatness, the greatness that doesn't come from you. Wow, that's what true humility, true humility is like, look, you are a child of God. You are God's beloved own in whom God is well pleased. And God has created you 100% worthy of love and peace. And you don't have to do anything to earn it. And you don't need to change anything to be worthy of it. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to beg for it. Okay, that because because you are a child of greatness, you are created from greatness. You're created in greatness. You are great. You are as God created you. That's what true humility asks of you: that you accept that you are the beloved, perfect child of God in whom God has, is well pleased and that you are the perfect child of God to whom God has given everything that God is, all the love, all the power, all the eternal life for free at no cost, no exceptions, no conditions, no time limit. True humility asks that you accept that, that you say, okay, if you say so, all right, okay. Instead of trying to tell the universe um, what you are. And content with littleness will be content with your own plan. Mm -hmm. And you could have God's plan. Exactly. Thank you. And Greg says that trying to remain content with littleness is you trying to be satisfied with your plans and your scripts and your judgments on reality um, in place of God's plans and God's what God has created to be true for you. Beautiful. All right. Now, it says, um, okay, it's 828, so it says, yeah, God didn't create, God didn't create God's dwelling place unworthy of God. So something to think about. Okay, God created you as God's home. Is God going to create God's own dwelling place unworthy of God? If God did create God's own dwelling place unworthy of God, well, wouldn't that mean that God was insane? So, of Course in Miracles is just one sentence after another after another reminding us, hey, um, God created you. And however God created you, that's how you are. You're not as you think you've made yourself. You're not as you learned you were from your parents and your teachers and the people in your culture. You are as God created you. And if God created you worthy of God, then you are. And end of story. That's what true humility knows. Whatever God created me to be, that's what I am. And uh, that's, that's the end of the story. Okay? And everything but that, everything besides I am as God created me, God who created me as his home, created me worthy of him without having to earn it or learn it or whatever, um, that is true humility beautiful all right and anything else is us just uh, that anything else besides that is our conviction that we are not worthy of that which our Creator created us as okay. that's why the one of the most repeated phrases in A Course in Miracles is I am as God created me I am as God created me, not how I made myself to be, not what I learned about myself from my parents or the people in my past. 
Whatever you say I am, God, that's what I am. That's true humility. And true humility um, is just asking that you accept that you are the greatness. You are the greatness that created you. Okay? You were created by greatness, and so you are, you have the greatness that created you. So that's, that's true humility. All right, so we are going to stop here. And next week, we will start with paragraph four in chapter 18, section four. And uh, that's where we'll pick up next week because in on, I'm sorry, never mind all that. This is a Monday. <laughs> on, on Mondays, we do random number generator. It's on Wednesdays that we're going through the annotated edition. I forgot what day it was. Okay. I was so in the moment, I forgot about time. So next Monday, um, I'll either continue on with this if I, if I get so guided or we'll continue with whatever spirit chooses for that day. So I appreciate you joining us. I'm going to do announcements and then I'm going to do a few minutes of an integration meditation where we take these ideas and use them. So um, thank you for, for watching. And if you want to see any of my other classes, mine or my classes with Greg, uh, then you can go to my YouTube channel, which is just my name. And it's all the classes that I do and that we do. Um, and it's just an easier format. Now, if you would like to support this Miracles Ministry, a free and easy way to do that is to go to my YouTube channel, hit like, share, and subscribe, and that is supportive of this ministry. That uh, indicates to YouTube that this content is important or valuable. And I thank you for that support. I thank you very, very much. So, um, and I thank you, uh, Jean and Jyoti and Frank for joining us. Wonderful to have you joining this healing circle through A Course in Miracles. So I'm going to do announcements and then the integration meditation where we take the ideas and use them. So announcements are this. Um, uh, between Greg and I, we do four classes a week. On Sundays, we do a healing relationships through A Course in Miracles class, Sundays. Very powerful. Of course, Miracles has a lot to say about the healing of relationships and how important that is for world peace and the healing of the world. And on Mondays, like right now, I'm doing Random Number Generator, Miracle Roulette. And on Tuesdays, Greg does his Course in Miracles class. It's on Facebook live stream as well. And Wednesdays, I'm just going through the annotated edition and we're in chapter six in our, in our journey through from chapter one. And um, that's it. So, and all of those classes are Facebook live stream, seven to 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. That's that. On Sundays, we're a little loose with the, the, the start of the class because it's Sunday. We wanna give ourselves a, you know, we wanna relax a little bit. So. That's the announcements. Also, uh, I'm a holistic psychotherapist and I have a psychotherapeutic niche called Miracle Psychotherapeutics. If you would like to set up a one-on-one -on -one Miracle Psychotherapeutic session with me, then you can go to my website, annakujawa.com, A-N-N-A-K-U-J-A-W-A.com, find my phone number on my website and text me, or you can private message me on Messenger. So, beautiful. And I'm a, a couples therapist, a children's therapist, family therapist as well. So if you're wanting some support uh, in some kind of challenge or transition you're going through in any area of your life, um, then I can, uh, but you want it from A Course in Miracles perspective, then I can support you around that. Okay, that's the announcements. Now, Integration meditation, we take just a couple of minutes and we take the ideas and we apply them. So I want you to close your eyes and take a breath. And just tune within.
force of miracles. you to bring to awareness a situation or a relationship in which there is not peace right now where there's conflict or fear or anger or grievances or pain any situation or relationship in which there is not peace to bring that to your awareness and see that situation or relationship in your mind's eye. the answer let's let's create a state of mind in which the answer can come to us obviously we don't have the answer to how to have peace so we would have it we need to create a state of mind in which the answer can come to us. We need to reach to a state of mind, create a mental condition in which the answer does come to us of itself from our higher self. And let's do that. So the first thing is we say, this holy instant right now, I am determined to be happy, to be at peace. I desire peace and I am willing to allow the peaceful answer to come to me. Higher self, spirit of truth within me, I want your peaceful answer your peaceful solution and plan and I want it above all else more than I want to be right more than I want my scripts and my plans I want your plan for my happiness your plan for my peace your answer that will bring me peace Tell yourself, I do not need to prepare myself for this peaceful solution, this miraculous solution. All I need to do is recognize that I want it above all else. I want your answer, your plan for my peace above all else. I don't need to prepare myself for I don't need to tell you what to do. I need to do nothing. Tell yourself, 
I need do nothing. But I am willing and I do desire your miraculous solution, your miraculous answers that do bring me peace and bring win-wins for everyone involved. That's what I want. That's what I desire. I'm willing. I desire. I'm willing receive your plan for peace. I desire your solutions that will bring peace. I'm willing. I don't know anything. I don't need to do anything. it's true that my ego is going to fight against this this solution this answer and that's all right if I didn't have an ego if I could come to the holy instant without the ego defenses then I wouldn't need a course in miracles I would need you Holy Spirit be concerned that your ego is resisting and trying to tell spirit what to do. Tell yourself, I don't need to make myself worthy for God's love and God's miraculous love, God's miraculous care. I don't need to make myself worthy. I don't need to do anything to accept all oh, love all the care, all the support, all the supply, all the peace, all the fun, all the freedom. I don't have to make myself worthy. I was created worthy by my creator who created me home to it. I am worthy as a child of God. created worthy of all the love and that's how I remain no matter what I have come to believe about myself what I learned about myself wasn't true and so in true humility I say I remain as God created me and I ask for what has been created for me and I ask to see myself as I was really created to be not what I made myself to be in true humility this is what I ask and breathe this is the holy instant and this is the answer guys and if you would like to extend this to the world feel free to share it on your Facebook feed 
and uh, thank you for going to my YouTube channel and liking and sharing and subscribing to help this idea extend out to more of the children of God, our brothers and sisters, who desperately need to hear this just like us. I appreciate you more than I can say, and I will see you next time I see you.